Please, can we? Yes, I. While the decoration is going on, I just felt I need to make one or two remarks. I came in and I thought um, actually that it was the divine service that was already going on. And um, I want to say that this is the best. I didn't want to say one of the best, I would say, sermon I've heard probably since I was born. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and uh, that was why I was uh, the best. And uh, I'm not just saying it. Uh, my brother, you have spoken like no other person has spoken, at least uh, here. And um, I want to thank God for this ministry. And um, our brother who has been the local person here, um, Emmanuel, Pastor Emmanuel, he has been doing a very good job. He has always been coming to us that we need to support this ministry and uh, that they're having a conference and things like that. Um, but with what I've seen today, I want to believe um, if there's anything more than support, we'll be willing to give it. We'll be willing to give it. And I want to thank God for you and for your ministry and uh, I'm also happy to have our pastor here. You are welcome, sir. Uh, it shows that this ministry is very, very important. And by the grace of God, I can see from the response that we are with you. And uh, we continue to support you. We support this ministry. And not just supporting them. I want to believe that heaven, heaven is supporting your ministry as well. God bless you. Shall we bow as we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your gift to the world through the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Because it's the remnant church, you have inspired your church to carry everyone along irrespective of talents, gifts, or otherwise that anyone may have. Thank you for calling us into this church and for using us as we make ourselves available. Take glory, Father. This is one of the aspects of the ministries in the church, the Adventist Possibilities Ministry. Father, may you continue to use us as you will. Endow us with your Holy Spirit so that every one of us, just as your servant has professed, will not only support this ministry, but will give our best to it. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for the Pioneer Church. We pray you will use the rest of our churches across Nigeria also to embrace this ministry and to give maximum support possible. Our greatest goal is to reign with you at last. Please count us worthy. Pioneer Church is a leading church in Nigeria. May you continue to prosper this church. Prosper our leadership and prosper Babcock University. Is our pride. Don't allow Satan to quench the flame in this place. Thank you for answering us. Blessed be thy name, O God. The convention, the National Convention for the Deaf, will come up in August. Lord, preserve our lives till that day. If you're tired in your coming, please take charge of that program and make it a huge success. Grant safety to all who will attend from far and near. 
And Lord, at the end, make your ministry in this particular aspect of the church to expand across Nigeria. Blessed be thy name, O God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. to worship. For our call to worship, we are going to take our hymns into our hands. We we'll now open to the to him 714 714. I will read the lighter print and you will respond reading the darker print. 714 700 and 14. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. With this, the, call is, the church is called to worship. Mortal, invisible, the only wise God. We want to give all the honor and glory to you for bringing us here today. And as we continue our service, bless us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath to us all. Please, I want it to be louder. Good morning and happy Sabbath to everyone. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm happy to have everybody here. I will be introducing the members that are um, the, uh, the altar here. Today is actually APM Day, as we have all heard, as Adventist Possibilities Ministries. 
So all the people that are seated there are members of their APM. I will start from my right, which is probably your left. I will start with Sister Chioma Alfios. Please, greet your church. Good day. Then I'll go to my brother, uh, Brother Efrebe. Please greet your church. Um, of course, I will come to this side, to my left side, Sister Patience Zachariah. Happy day. Um, I want to call and uh, to introduce the interpreter as well. That's Pastor Emmanuel. It's very familiar to everyone. And, um, yes. I, the person that will be breaking the bread of life to us today is the elder in charge of the ministry. And that's the uh, elder, Peter Ojiroye. Please welcome me. So Happy day. And I am a boss, Makinde. Your servant, a member of the APM ministry as well. Thank you. Let's rise as we take the opening hymn from SDH 109.
God, we want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here. As we are going to listen to your words today, may you be the doers of the words and not the hearers alone. And all of us, as we are standing, we have our different challenges, disabilities. But you are the only one that can heal us. You are the only one that can give us joy. Father, please do that for us today. And at the end of everything, will you make it to heaven? It's my prayer in Jesus' name. This is the time for offering. I call on the deacons to wait on us. We have some thank offering here. I want to appreciate God for the grace of God in my life as he has given me the gift of life and added another year to my life this week. May his name be glorified as I celebrate my birthday from Mrs. Adekemi Adeleke Alabi. Amen. Another one says, I'm grateful to God for adding another year to my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Baby Ikenna Eliana Ugochiere is thanking God for his faithfulness and power. May his name be praised forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I invite the choir to give us their special song. came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? Jesus answered to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines 
floods, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then will many be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. other thanks offering here. I thank God for adding another year to my life. He's an amazing God. Amen. All I can say is thank you, Lord, from the Jerry in Zemwata's family. Let's bow as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so, so much for your awesomeness, for your love towards us. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for life. Thank you for bringing us to church today. Thank you for the offerings that we've given. Father, we ask that you bless each one of us and bless the offering that we have presented before you. In any way we have given a miss, Lord, may you forgive us and help us to give you faithfully. For those who were unable to give, for whatever reason, place in our hearts that we'll be able to give you generously. And Lord, at last, when our journey here on earth is done, when you shall appear in the clouds of heaven, may we all seated here and those standing be among those whom you are showing to your kingdom. This we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Good morning, church. Here, yeah. I want to say a reading topic from John, book John. I will say John 1, verse 1 to 3 starts. God asked now Lord to somewhere in the start thing with God. Verse 3 All things here we are made through him and without him, nothing that was made was made. And a, okay, he said again. John chapter 1, verse 1, he says, in the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 2, in the beginning, the Word was with God. Verse 3, all things here, we are made through him and without him was nothing made. Amen. 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 Our hymn of meditation is from Seventh day Adventist hymn now 359. Hark the voice of Jesus calling him 359. We'll do the first and the last stanza. Is it 359?
Father, we want to thank you again for an opportunity to be here. As we are going to listen to your words now, we pray that you be with us, help us, and make us to be the doers of the words. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Uh, good morning, everyone. Stay to 12. I want to thank God for this great opportunity that I have been given to, to speak. But before I say one or two things that I have, I need to recognize a number of our people. Now, we have our leaders from the East, Nigeria Conference, Elder Monu, you are welcome. We also have Dr. Agbabiaka from our uh, conference here, you are welcome, sir. Then, <coughs> uh, I must not fail it to recognize my wife, she's in church. Uh, she has been the one that has been putting butter into my bread. Even at times, I, I don't know where the socks is. So he, she will have to go and bring it out. So thank you so much for taking good care of me. People used to say that I look good, I look fine. She's behind the scene. Thank you, and God bless your ministry. Uh, today is Adventist Possibility Ministry Sabbath, 8 p.m. Now, there are um, a number of things that we have in that program. And some of them you have seen in the morning. So I will give you uh, a little brief about what happens. What is the function of APM? Adventist Possible Ministry is a grassroots movement with the organization now advocacy by the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. It is a ministry prompted by God's grace. Now, APM was designed by the General Conference so that we can be able to meet the needs of everybody in the church. Now, the pastors cannot go everywhere. And they need people to go and do some things for them. For example, if um, we lost somebody in town, the pastor may not know about it. But somebody will have to say, ah, Oga, this thing happened though. So, APM is there for you. Now, what are our functions? We are APM, a movement, not a program. Guided by the Holy Ghost to help us see through the eyes of what? A loving God. The strength and possibilities of seven unique people groups. Now, the GC has been able to group everybody in the church. All right? And then we have this set of people that needs our attention, that needs our touch, that needs our love, and that needs our support. And who are these people? We have the deaf. We are to minister to them. The blind. The physically immobile. Those who have mental health and challenges. It is our duty to take care of them. It is our duty to show love to them. Okay? We should not neglect them or cast them away. All right? Then, orphans. Vulnerable children. Those mourning the loss of a spouse. Okay? And the support of what? Caregivers. Now, all the caregivers. Now, if you are a caregiver in this hall, please stand up. If you are a caregiver. Now, caregiver now, you can be maybe you have an elderly person that you are taking care of at home. You have a sick person that you are taking care of at home. Okay? Or somebody that you are taking care of. You don't have anybody like that, yeah? Caregivers. Ah. Okay, stand, 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 stand. Okay. Immortal, invisible, the only wise God. I want to commit all these people standing into your care. Come and bless them, O oh Lord. They give their time. They give their strength. They give their everything to take care of those people. Father, bless them. Take care of them and provide for them in Jesus' name, I pray. Now, they are doing a great work. Right? In Yoruba proverb, it says, the person taking care of a sick person is the one that is sick. Because you have to feed the person, you have to change the clothes, you have to give the medication, you have to, in fact, you have to think for the person. So, God bless your ministry in Jesus' name. Now, Adventist Possibility Ministry is a life-changing ministry. That's what we are. Life-changing ministry. Somebody that is poor, somebody 
that is sick, we try to give the person a new life by working with them. It is sometimes referred to as special needs ministries. Adventist Possibility Ministries aim to empower all children. Every kid deserves what? Love, support, and a bright future. The church cares for the welfare of the church members. It is not possible for the pastors to be everywhere. That is why we have the APM to stand in the gap. Therefore, I want to appeal to all deacons, deaconesses, and concerned church members that when you see any of the cases mentioned, please call our attention okay, to them and the church presence will be felt. Because if you don't tell us, we won't know. Then you say the church is not here. The church does not do anything. It's because you that know did not tell us to know. Tell us we will be there and God's presence will be felt. Now, our activities so far. So, here now, what have we done so far? I just want to give us a little brief of that. This year, we have been able to visit some vulnerable children and with the help of the church and some individuals, we have been able to sponsor a child into a primary school with the school fees paid and the uniform bought. The pictures below speaks. Now, these are the deaf ministry members. Some of them, you will have been seeing them around. Sorry, um, my picture is not too sharp. Okay, so we have them and then Now, that's the child on sponsorship, right? So, the coordinator has been able to arrange and the, the girl is in school and we are paying the school fees and uh, then visitation, uh, not too clear. We do make visitation and this is one of the periods that went around to visit a child. Then members, okay, you have been seeing them around. Now, another thing is coming very soon that we, the pastor has said something about it, is that we are going to have the first ever deaf ministry convention. All right? That will take place here at Bapo. If you look at the logos, you can see the sponsorship. All right? The university is supporting. All right? And many others. And when is that taking place? August 18 to 24 this year. That is when we are going to have that convention. And it's taking place at where? Papua University. Okay? So we want you to pray. Okay, 4 to 11. 4 to 11. In the poster given to us, it is 18 to 24. All right? Okay. 4 to 11. August 4 to 11. So it is here. They will be... They were going to accommodate them here. They, they will be fed there. They will be trained. They will have everything for them. So first ever, okay, we are going to have it here at Babcock. So pray along with us for a successful convention. Now, appreciation. I want to thank the church pastors for their support, without which this work cannot be done fruitfully. We have been enjoying the support of the church and that is making the work to go. I also appreciate all members that are donating towards the special needs sports. God bless you abundantly. To all members of the APM, starting from the leader, Mrs. Bosse Makindi, may God bless all of us according to his riches in heaven. Now, the sermon for today was adopted from the GC uh, team for the sermon. No, we have to base it. We have to base it to the local. Because if I just come and tell you something that is not relating here, you just hear. Yeah. So we have to bring it down so that we'll be able to understand that. So it was called out or was able to be, uh, we carried it out from an encounter of possibilities, which is from Genesis 32, 22 to 32. That is when Jacob okay, met the angel and the tie was touched and other things like that. It became limp and whatever. So we talk more about that as we go along. So the title for today's sermon, which we call from that an encounter, is born blind. Who sinned? The man or his parents? An encounter of possibilities. Right? Now, I don't know where something went wrong. The Bible passage that I wanted them to, to give us is John 9, 1 to 8. But 
summer, summer along the line, the something changed. But nevertheless, everything works together for good. So, people with disabilities are often marginalized and underestimated by society due to their physical and mental limitations. They face stigmas and prejudice. Now, I believe that even there are some of us now, where you know that somebody is blind or is disabled, we don't want to sit beside them. That's part of the prejudice we are talking about. All right? Or maybe you have somebody at home or a child that is an imbecile. You don't want anybody to know that you have an imbecile child. You go and lock the person. When you hear that the visitor is coming, you go and lock him, lock him or her inside the room. Okay? No, you shouldn't do that. God knows why he gave it to you. So that you'll be able to showcase, all right, the glory of God. And he just came to the blind man. He gave him salvation, acceptance, hope, and love. This is what God expects us, okay, as we relate with the blind, the deaf, and the people with other disabilities. The blind man teaches us the limitations of individual perspectives and the potential for more understanding. People with disabilities teach us the importance of humility. Right? Humility. Now, I think when, when, the, when Pastor Monu was talking, he said, no condition is permanent. At times, some things can happen. Have we not seen people that have eyes before and all of a sudden, they are blind? Or have we not seen people that are able to walk very well due to accident or something, now they became lame? Or somebody now has stroke, and this time around, stroke is no respecter of person. Okay? So, and that's why I, we, we have to show love to all those people that we have seen that have it now. We have to, to, to be with them. We have to encourage them. We have to let them know that they belong, though they have special conditions. So, it's our duty to do that. Now, the challenge is... The, they challenge us to rethink our standards of value and success. With Jesus in our lives, we have nothing to fear. In the time of Jesus. So, when I'm saying that, who is responsible from the title? Is it the man? Is it the parents? Okay. When I was first preparing the first title before I changed it, I said, is it God? All right. Who somebody is responsible? Okay. But now, let us see how it goes. Who is responsible? In the time of Jesus, if someone was born blind, even in our time, people assume this was because God was punishing the parents or the family for something they had done wrong. That is where we normally put it. Oh, don't mind them. They have done something wrong. That's a repercussion. Okay? We are going to see whether that is it or whether that is not. Now, scientifically, born, being born blind isn't anyone's fault. It's, it's usually due to a combination of genetic factors, parental conditions, or complications during birth. Right? There are some, they are blessed. They just go into the um, labor and say, push, push, and they say, ah, 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 ah. say hey, congratulations. But some have to cry. Some have to pray. People have to go around. Okay? Before. In the process of that, some have challenges. Okay? And we should not just neglect them. Some cases may be preventable with medical interventions. Why many are not? It is essential to focus on providing support and resources to individuals born blind or disabled rather than assigning uh, blames. So, we are accustomed to assigning blames. We are accustomed to having one fault or the other. We are accustomed to a number of things. But here today, I want us to know that we should not do that. We should not do that. Because anything can happen along the line. And if you are lucky to have such children see it as a blessing from God and don't let the stigmatization from people hinder you from doing the will of God so we have to provide support and resources to them so that 
they can feel accepted. All right? Jesus healed the blind man to show that he has power over evil and his devices. So he has power over whatever challenges you or I may have. All we need is what? To trust him. So when we trust God, then all our challenges will be taken good care of. Now, what is Jesus' perspective to that question? Who is responsible? Okay? Now, in John 9, verse 3, Jesus says that neither this man nor his parents what? Sin. So, when you see all these cases, all these challenges, don't let us think that, hey, good, God don't catch him. All right? You know, God is uh, all knowing. He's Alpha and Omega. He can create. He can destroy. He can decide to use anybody for his glory in any way he wants. Right? So when you have people like that, God wants you to be an example to others. God wants to use you. You know, God will not come down from heaven and start doing all those things. He will use somebody. So God feels that if you are the one that he wants to go and do that job for him. And that's why you have that assignment. So please, don't fail God in your assignment. Now, if further says that this happened so that the works of God might be what? Displayed. Alright? Or demonstrated in him. Because God wants people to know that he's God of all. He can create he can destroy. He can do anything. And wants you to be what? A point of contact. Another translation of the verse says, Neither had this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest evidence in him. Alright? Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us be guided that not all cases of disabilities uh, as a result of sin or cause. But well, someone is okay, it was caused. Alright? But to demonstrate that love and healing power of God, be careful how you look at them and what you utter or say from your mouth in order not to sin against God. In verse 4, talking about John 9, 1 to 8, Jesus wants us to go out and minister to the blind, the deaf, and the lame. Now, Bible says Christ will not come until we have preached the word, the, the, the word throughout the world. So this section of the people, if you don't preach to them, the work is not complete. Therefore, Christ will not come. So if you want Christ to come, we need to love them. If you want Christ to come in time, all right, we need to support them. If you want Christ to come, we need to let them know that God is for them. So the man was healed. Now he said now in verse 7 of the chapter, the man had what? An encounter of possibilities with Jesus. Alright? He has not known Jesus before. He has not seen Jesus before because he was not seen. So when the question now came, who sinned? This man or the parents? That's where what? He had what? An encounter with Jesus. Alright? So the man was healed. His sight was restored and was sent home to his people. It is our duty to help them and provide for their needs and show them what? Love. Don't just send them away. Don't shout on them. <laughs> who, who, who called you? Eh? Who called you? No. We shouldn't do that. We should show love to them. We should treat them kindly. We should send them away. Alright? In a way that they will be happy when they get home. Alright? But I, I, how many of us, maybe now you go out, you are in lack of something, and uh, you just get out, you see somebody who just gave you, ah, um, my brother, I've been looking for you for long. Oh, how is it? It's okay, ah, I am this, I am that. Okay, don't worry, don't worry, I'll find time to give you. Now, take this one. And you have that money. Or letter, or whatever. What will you do when you get to? Ah, long Oshio. 
thank you, Jesus. Ah, it will bless me today. Is it God that came down to bless you? Send somebody. He sent somebody to bless you. So, you also may be a blessing to any of these as we meet them along the highway of life. So, it's our duty now to pray for their needs and show them love. In Exodus 4, 11, Moses had an encounter or possibility with the Lord. It was written, and the Lord said unto him, Moses, who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb, or deaf, or the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? So that you can know that God is always there for us during the times that are good. He's always there for us during the times that are bad. Okay? Because he holds the whole world. And the power to create is within. And the power to destroy is also within. Then another translation now says, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or sin or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? That's Exodus 4, 11, all right? Is it not I, the Lord? So God is the Alpha and the Omega. He has power to create and to destroy. Let all glory be to all his name. Let all glory be to all his name. Now, as we had all that, for Jesus now gave another warning when he met another disabled person. All right? So, you can see that one in John 5, 14. So, when Jesus healed the physically impaired man who lay by the pool of Bethsaida, he said to him, See, you are well again. Stop sinning. Or something worse will happen to you. John 5, 14. Now, as we say that medically, there are some other conditions that will make such things to happen. Let's say you are a chain smoker. From one to, you know, there are some women, ah, they are good in smoking, you know. Eh? You just see them, they finish one packet. Now, or alcohol, they drink. Right. Maybe because you are not doing it in moderation, and you are pregnant, and your child came up disabled. Now, God is telling you, hey, Omo, take time, oh. You are enjoying grace. You are enjoying provision. You are enjoying everything. If you don't stop what are sins, something what? Greater than that may happen. So sin may also be a cause of that. So John 5, 4 says, stop sinning or something worse will happen to you. This clearly indicates that Jesus thought there was a connection between the man's disability and sin. So sin can cause what? Disabilities. Now, divine inclusion. You know, God loves these people. He did not forget them. So in the plan of salvation, he has a plan for them. Okay, let's see. The importance of people with disabilities in the Bible. You know, we talk about Moses. Moses was saying, and eh, when God wanted to send him to Herod, he said, ah, you know that I cannot talk well. Eh? You know that I, my tongue is not all that. He said, don't worry. Okay? He provided a way out for him. Now, throughout the scriptures, we find numerous stories of people with disabilities who play significant roles in history and the mission of God. For example, we have these seven people. Now, time may not allow me to analyze them one by one. But at least we have an idea. Seven people here. Yeah. Isaac was blind. Isaac, second of the three patriarchs of the Jewish nation, was what? Blind. So anybody can be blind. And I have told you now that, in fact, in this recent, this recent, uh, uh, what now? This recent fire of the world. Now, you just see somebody that you have seen maybe yesterday, and then tomorrow, you know that the person is what? Eh? Heart stroke. And the hand is no longer. Or now, the person cannot talk very well. Okay? So, that's why we need to be very careful. Now, Jacob limped. Alright? We had an encounter with Jesus. Alright? 
and was fighting the angel. He said, hey, okay, you want to prevail? I mean, um, bam. And now it became. Anything can happen to anybody along the line. Now, Cushim was hard of hearing that, okay, Moses.